Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Um, a little sleepy this morning, as I always am every morning. Um, what we got going on today is um, I'm swapping out another switch. Um, so I have a project to replace all of my legacy. If you can see that legacy switches there. Um, those are the old Extreme uh, C series. And we're replacing them with these newer um, extreme switches. I was replacing them with uh, X460 G2s. Um, and this is actually, uh, what's the model number? 5250. It's a, they're calling it their universal switch because I can either run XOS, which is their normal uh, OS for these uh, edge switches, or we can run. Um, VOSS, uh, V-O-S-S, the same thing that the VSPs, the newer fabric switches run. So you can either have these just be regular generic layer 2 slash layer 3 switches, or you can actually have them participate in fabric. And uh, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to have them run as like a regular old edge switch. Um, so it's cabling is still kind of a mess. I'm going to do this in two phases. I want to... Uh, this morning all I did is just move these cables down from this switch to this switch, port for port. Um, I'm going to let it run for a day and make sure we don't have any issues. And um, if we don't, I want to leave that other switch up there because since I did move everything over port to port, if they say they have a VLAN problem on you know, a given port, once I narrow it down to what port, I can check it to the old config and see if there's something I missed. So. I don't think so. I could probably just do it all this morning, but uh, I'll just be on the safe side and um, swap, them all, swap them all over this morning. And if I don't hear anything today, tomorrow I'll clean all this up and put in. Uh, where are they? I have some out of back here. There we go. Short cables, slim runs. So these are all one footers. I've got a few two footers right here. For cables that are going to be a long reach, I wanted to put all my access points on uh, one set of one grouping of ports. So I put them all the way at the end, and I need some longer cables to go, you know, all over the patch cable from wherever the APs are. So that's that's the deal for this week. Um, it's going to be pretty easy to do the final thing. I'm, I'm going to have to disconnect all these cables, so I'm just going to rip them. I'm going to disconnect them all from the switch. I'm not just going to rip them out. Disconnect them all from the switch. Then I'm going to take this switch out since I, I could probably weasel enough room here to squeeze that switch out. But probably tomorrow morning I'm going to come back and just take all those off. Pull the old switch out. Take this switch and move it up to where this old switch was. And then I'll install the shorter cables. So. And this will this will run for 24 hours, so I'll know everything's going to work once I put it all back. Um, I also, there were a few different data VLANs on here. I also put everything on one data VLAN. Um, this this closet's data VLAN, so. Shouldn't be any kind of weird port mapping I need to do. Everything should just work, so. There you go. Um, Let's see, uh, I addressed a couple of issues from, uh, from my previous videos. The, uh, the, the VPN videos have just been going crazy. And I really thank you guys for all the, the suggestions, they're all great. Um, one thing that some people are having difficulty understanding, and, and it's probably me because I've not made it clear, is uh, the, these particular remote, remote users do not work for the hospital. They're contractors. Um, I don't control their equipment. I don't have access to their equipment, um, so I can't go in there and set up any kind of routing. I can't. I can't do anything network-wise over there. Um, and the gentleman that I'm dealing with over there, he's more of an office manager type. He's not a network engineer. He's not a network admin. He kind of does a little bit of everything. If anything, he's more of a server guy. So I don't have access to any of their stuff. Now somebody made a really good suggestion. It's like, well. What happens if it's at your location and, you know, is there any problems? So they do have a, a setup um, at our hospital that mimics what they have out in their remote offices. 
and uh, they, they call it a bunker, bunker machine. And it's basically a big, huge workstation, high-end workstation, and it runs, I don't know, five or six virtual machines, not simultaneously. So they have five or six virtual machines set up in this VMware machine, and um, they're all powered down. So when he wants to work for our hospital, I'm gonna put brace my hand up against here so I'm not shaking. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me do this. There you go. So when they want to work for our hospital, they will they will power on our virtual machine, and then they will do our work. When they're done, they're gonna power down that virtual machine, and let's say they're gonna work for another hospital, like one across town. That hospital has its own virtual machine. They will power that up. They're Contracting, there, there are a group of doctors that contract with many hospitals. They, they don't work just for my hospital, they work for many hospitals. And they, I don't have any control over them. They are a separate company. I don't have access to their network resources. So, um, but many of you have said, uh, it's not you, it's them. I agree. But I have a, um, I have some management that wants to make sure we've, we've done absolutely everything we can do to ensure it is not us. So, I don't know how many of you worked with doctors before, but they can, they can be a little, little needy um, and a little demanding. <laughs> so, we're just making sure it's not us. Um, there was a good suggestion out there about uh, upgrading the, the firewall operating system to, to a certain level. Because uh, we're, we're a couple revs behind. Um, this, this particular person said they were having similar issues until they upgraded to a specific OS level and then their VPN latency issues went away. Specifically, Global Protect VPN. So, again, there's no way I can go out to that office. I can't set up a site-to-site -site VPN because they, they don't have any routing equipment. All they have are these particular machines and an ISP. There's no network infrastructure involved. Um, in many cases, these are people's homes. In some cases, they're a, a doctor's office. Um, they're all over the state of California. They're, they're not in one particular place. So um, that's why they use Global Protect. And that's why we can't use a site-to-site -site VPN because they're everywhere. And because they work with different hospitals, we can't have a site-to-site -site tunnel with them while they're working with another hospital. Um, and it's just not good practice unless, unless they've signed all kinds of agreements and we're sure we're not going to get some kind of weird routing loop because, you know, we, we have a certain IP uh, address space within our hospital. If we set up a site-to-site -site tunnel with them and they connect it to another hospital, you know, it could set up the same, they could have the same IP address space we do, and we really don't want that, so. And the work involved is just not worth it, you know, especially when it's probably them, <laughs> so. Yeah, and they, they have a mix of either Comcast or AT&T as their internet service providers. And they have 300 megabits uh, download and 30 meg upload. And so to me, I don't know, I, I'm not an expert on PAX software. Sounds like there one of you out there was, though. Um, I don't know how PAX, uh, if it's more, relies on more just a download, like a, just a bulk download and it gets the images, or if it's more like a, like, you know, file transfer where, it, you know, it, it, it relies on both the, the upload and download speed. Um, so, in that case, they're going to be limited to 30 meg, period. That's best we can do. <laughs> So anyway, that's that. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, lastly, there's a couple people that have said, why do you have to keep bringing God up into the videos? Because I do. I'm gonna. God's a huge part of my life. Jesus is a huge part of my life. You know, and if you don't like it, that's, I'm sorry. But uh, that's the way it is with me. It's, I'm always going to give God the glory for everything I do. Not just here at work, but at home. When I fly, whatever I do, God gets the glory. So, um, yeah, you rabid atheists, sorry, go go watch a different network admin life channel. Uh, you'd be happier. So I don't I don't want you being upset because I say God, 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 God. Um, so go watch another channel. I don't mind, really. 
So that's kind of short this week. I will probably post an addendum to this so that you can see what that mess looks like all cleaned up. So here, let's take a good look at the before. And then I'm going to come in here tomorrow and clean it up. And uh, I'll post a short video addendum to that so you can see what it looks like all cleaned up. So, um, yeah, I won't close this video. I'll just say, see you tomorrow. Well, it's magically tomorrow. Um, and I've gotten started on this, but I unfortunately was not able to finish it because I ran out of patch cables. I was going to use, um, I got a whole ton of, let's see if we can see them here, a whole ton of these little slim run one foot patch cables that I thought would work. Um, they don't, they're just not quite long enough. So I had to go with two foot slim run patch cables and I ran out so that's all I have so I have still have sloppy cable mess on this side neat and tidy on this side so um, that's what I'm gonna move to I'm just gonna have to order some more uh, two foot slim run cables um, and these I'm just throwing out because they've been here for 10 years and uh, some of them are quite brittle and some are very sticky hard to get out of the connectors so they're actually fusing into the the uh, patch panel there so um, yeah the only other thing I did that I didn't show on the video is I removed the legacy switch that was up there and I moved this switch up to be closer to the patch panel and the legacy switch is right down there so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know when those cables will come in, so I don't want to keep this video open until that happens. So, uh, but you see where I'm going with it. And uh, basically what I'm doing is just to minimize downtime of the users, I just replace one cable at a time, and bada bing. So, uh, there you go. That's the, uh, that's the end of this switch upgrade, pretty much. So if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell if you so desire. Uh, leave a comment below if, uh, if you think this is something you would do, or if you would do it different, or uh, if you just think I'm an utter fool and, and don't know what I'm doing, that's okay too. Um, just be nice, be nice about calling me a fool, because I delete mean comments whether they're directed at me or anyone else. So, because we want this to be a happy place. So anyway. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. God bless, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Uh, there it is.